and walking around and tapping on stuff, it feels like like sometimes these the little sounds can be huge yeah. parts of a record. Absolutely. You know, because sometimes you, you don't even notice it, and that could be like your favorite part. It, you notice it if you took it out. Right. Right, or you notice it if it's not in there yet because you're still searching for something. Going like, well, I'm playing drums on this, I'm playing bass on this, and and there's guitar and the vocals there, and everything sounds good, but it doesn't sound as good as my favorite records. Why? You know. Like, yeah, of course. And and I think that that's the that's the thing that sets everybody off on the journey to find something new. Yeah. Today I am here with Blake Mills, and we are in the East West. Just to kind of give a brief introduction, we worked together for the first time this year. Was it your first experience working at East West? Which record did we start on? Well, it was the live tracking session in January. Yeah, with uh, Chris, Dave, and Pino and the guys. I think that was my first experience. Working at East West as a producer, I'd, nice. I'd, I'd played here a few times on sessions. Okay, uh, so as a guitar player. Nice, yeah. cool. So, uh, just to give a little background, you are a remarkable guitar player, now music producer, and also kind of engineer. Like you probably wouldn't say that you're an engineer, but I, I would wouldn't. say that you you can engineer a little. I've bit. worked with some great engineers. Yeah. So I've I've gotten to. Um, and I've I've worked with some not great engineers. Sure. So yeah. it, like once you have that that kind of uh, sometimes you learn the bigger lessons with those guys. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I I just I feel like I, in working with um, some people who are, are really truly talented in that field, um, Sean Everett, Greg Kohler. Yeah. Um, that I, it it's just opened my eyes to what an art form it, it really is. So I, yeah. I've got tremendous respect, but. It's one of those things that uh, if I were to um, if I were to be left in a room alone with uh, a bunch of outboard equipment and stuff, I, I wouldn't really yeah you know know what I was doing. Big on disconnected puzzle of random gear everywhere. Yeah, it's still beautifully mysterious to me. Yeah, it's kind of a witchcraft. Mm -hmm. um, so when was the first time that you ever recorded something, like to a tape machine or to a computer or something? Do you remember how old you were or, like, what was no. going on? No, I don't remember the first. I don't remember a lot of firsts. Gotcha. For some reason in general. I, but I... Was there a particular thing that kind of drove you to start recording yourself or like recording with friends well just like writing uh, being a songwriter yeah you know i, I think a, a large part of the reward in writing is is that moment when you put it down and you listen back and yeah tweak it cool you know? and i i think i, I probably as i was as i was sort of d developing my interest in in songwriting and learning you know from records my favorite records like how to do it um trying to learn i think the the advent of of like garage band and and home recording it just it made that so easy mm -hmm. and kind of pedestrian that a lot of this the sound of the or the style of the songs was geared towards the sound of garage band you okay, know right like like yeah. the 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 how easy it is to loop something you know right. so the style of writing starts to uh, uh, lean on on looped rhythm parts or sections and things sure. like that and you 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 I think probably end up developing habits and and go to tricks based on what platform it is you're used to using. Right, the yeah. kind of workflow yeah. of whatever your software yeah, is. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've seen it in engineering, and it certainly goes for songwriting and, yeah. and playing, you know, like certain instruments you pick up. They start building the drums. Kind of tell you to be, or if you pick up a Les Paul, it tells you, you know, kind of how to play it. Sure. Whether that's, whether that's like, like subconscious 
listen, yeah. you know, like you see an image of, of Jimmy Page when you pick it up or whether right. it's because just the, the physicality of it demands a certain aesthetic. I think the, the pro, it, when I was in high school, our public high school got a, a grant and built a recording studio. Mm-hmm. So the music program had a recording studio and it was teaching everybody how to start a Pro Tools session from scratch and, and record nice. yourself. Yeah. But they had Pro Tools and they had Logic. And and depending on what your interests were, it felt like people sort of went through the shoot, you know, one, right. one or the other. And, and um, I just kind of ended up um, becoming more familiar with Pro Tools. And that's still, that's still the way that I, I guess I, I see music. Sure. To a large degree. Sure, yeah. I feel the same way. The first software I ever used was Logic just because I had it on Mac and I didn't have, you had to have the DigiDesign hardware mm-hmm. in order to use Pro Tools yeah. before the iLock yeah. situation happened. So, But I quickly merged to Pro Tools once I learned like how you know specific each function was and just <coughs> kind of, it was the platform for everyone at every studio. And, yeah. You know. It's pretty cool. Now you are spending the majority of your time, and in my experience, producing. Mm-hmm. How's that going? Are you Good. A lot of fun. Yeah, it, I am. I'm getting to work on records that feel like they, um, they demand a certain amount of like creativity from everybody yeah. involved on them. Like you, you can't, you can't really drag your feet. Um, and that that's really exciting. You yeah. Know? And it, it, it the 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 genres and the 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 um, style of music has been so diverse and eclectic. And yeah, absolutely. So it's been fun to work on a pop record and then make a record with um, my old buddies and Dawes, and it, which is more of a a rock record. Yeah. Like a modern rock record and try to apply certain sensibilities from working on the pop stuff and and uh, uh, vice versa you know bringing players into a pop session and it's it baffles me still when people walk in to this room and see all the mics and instruments and 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 like they're relieved like that that that's not what <laughs> usually happens here when yeah. people are doing big budget records like right. the, the tracking room doesn't really get used right where's um, the laptop yeah, right. <laughs> so it's uh it seems like there's some crosstalk maybe in the way that um the records that I've produced uh, have, have 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 gone on and I'm certainly not claiming that that's that I'm the only person doing that but it's mm. it's nice to apply my background as a session musician yeah. to you know to all of it to to making a pop record to making a rock record and Cool. Um, One of the things uh, that I admire most about working with you is your kind of ability to catalog noises in your brain. So, like, you'll you might just be like tapping on something and be like, "Oh, that's a good sound," or you know, and then like kind of just remember it whenever you're working on something later and be like, "Oh, that one thing I did earlier with that case," or you know, just hitting this one thing. And yeah, kind of finding a way to make that really tie together like s- something that's already really great but just kind of a- adds like um, something special it's just cool to watch like a producer firsthand kind of be creative in that sort of practical application because it's um i've worked with a lot of really great producers and learned a lot from them but it's you know you're kind of a lot more experimental and you know really into the drums and I don't know if I've told you, but I'm a drummer. Yeah. And I love, like, it's, like, the biggest thing, watching you, like, put together the different drum tracks for the songs. And it sounds so cool. I mean, we're just surrounded yeah, there's <laughs> right a lot now here. by all these amazing snares and everything. Well, it's interesting that, that, that that's, again, such an unusual part of the process for, for other people because it's whether you're building a track from a sample library mm-hmm. – um, or you're recording your own sounds. It's it's largely the same process, right? But with a sample library, it feels like it's harder to get the diversity, right? Um, 
everything sounds good mm -hmm. in the sample libraries that, that I've sifted through. It may not sound lifelike or realistic or, or appropriate for, you know, the, the whatever purpose you're searching through there for, but everything is recorded well, everything's punchy. Right. Um, with regard to making records that have more depth of field, you know, the the the, the ear, the eye, all of anything that perceives uh, you know, has has depth perception needs stuff that's not in crystal clear focus, right? To give context. Sure. So like just earlier tonight, remember when we were working on a track that we, we had this like this really great room sound but it was on everything yeah you know it was on the drums which were all pretty low it was on the vocals which were gang vocals lots of doubled and stuff so there's no there's no tactile thing to grab onto that's mm -hmm. that's in the focus right and so by putting a couple of smaller sounds that are closer Mm -hmm. in there and, and and trying to balance it so that it feels like it it is you know at the right distance from the stuff that sounds far away right but that's actually louder yeah. it makes all the other stuff that's far away sound closer mm -hmm. as greg said it's like wow it does really put into context this stuff that that isn't punchy and isn't up front but when you do have that context all of a sudden your record sounds so much bigger Right. Then the records where everything is punchy and everything is tight and kind of anechoic. Right. So in walking around and tapping on stuff, it feels like like sometimes these little sounds can be huge yeah. parts of a record. Absolutely. You know, because sometimes you, you don't even notice it and that could be like your favorite part. Yeah, it's in there and it, it you notice it if you took it out. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Or you notice it if it's not in there yet because you're still searching for something going like, well, I'm playing drums on this, I'm playing bass on this, and, and there's guitar and the vocals there, and everything sounds good, but it doesn't sound as good as my favorite records. Why? You know, like, yeah, of course. And, and I think that that's the, that's the thing that sets everybody off on the journey to find something new. Yeah. So one of the things I've been talking to a lot of my friends out here about is kind of the, the misconceptions about you know, at least technically when you're talking about recording, how there's kind of like these rules that you have to like use specific mics on specific sources or things like that. And uh, like I was saying, one of the things I admire about you is, I mean, you have multiple different styles of engineers that you work with and you have all of these different people with very different creative sort of ideas who work together but um it, it, there's a lot of like breaking the rules like in the right way that just works together so so amazingly like i learned so much from greg just watching him you know, yeah me drums too on the dawes record. me too it's like holy crap but i would have what never you, thought to do that what you're describing is music yeah you know like exactly. it like that celebration of somebody doing the unexpected thing and breaking the rule is um, what a lot of people choose to get into music for to begin with, yeah. because you know you can you, you can you can still do that, you can still break the rules. It's not like it's not a competition, right? Right. So, is in regards to how like how far the rules apply, mm -hmm. I think that there is such thing as like physics, sonic physics. You know, there are things that. There are, are laws in regards to how bottom end behaves and sure. and why certain tracks don't sound as good to some as other tracks, right? And you can like analyze it and pick it apart. And so there are it's not it's not a false argument to say this mic sounds really good on a kick drum. Yeah. Right. So when you go to it and you and, it, and the mic gets excited by kick drums, um, and you you find the right combination, it, it's great. Yeah, but I I don't subscribe to the um, dogma that 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 sound is always appropriate right. for whatever it is that you're doing, because if everything is everything is 
big down there. If your kick drum is big down there and your bass is big down there, and nothing's big anymore. Exactly. You know, depends like, on the context, the yeah. style of the song. Yeah. How many instruments are playing? Like, I liked. I mean, and there's even there's even exceptions to that rule. There are people that have broken that rule and made you know everything's big down. There. It's like, yeah. wow, how did they do it? But I I I really like searching for not only the what it is in the track that's going to um, rule each sort of spectrum mm -hmm. uh, or part of the spectrum rather, but I I like arranging so that that stuff is coming through like it, it doesn't have to fight against the rest of the track sure. something else playing in the track so like right. it comes from building guitar parts right you know and being a being a band member playing with playing in a band where there's another guitar and you like really have to think learn how about to what balance you're doing. with each other yeah and and playing with a drummer and learning how to if you're playing with a drummer who's doing something incredible it can be so much fun but it can make you forget that you need to stay <laughs> the hell out of the way of the thing that he's doing that's so incredible. When yeah. You start doing it, you're it's like having an amazing take and then having somebody double it, you know. And yeah. you're not gonna double what was amazing about that. It's right. not gonna be bigger, it's not gonna be better. Let that thing be, let it do what it's gonna do and yeah. and try to resist the urge to copy it. Um that the reason I'm like getting into it is because that that arranging that part of, of uh, working with musicians or building a track goes hand in hand with, with the rules that people talk about, you know, like use this mic on this thing sure. to get this thing. Like, okay, then do it. <laughs> use it on that thing to get that thing. But once you get to the end of all those rules, the, the rules are things that everybody, most people are subscribing to, right? So, You've you've arrived at a record that sounds like most people's record. Exactly. And if that's not what you're after, then yeah, you're 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 on a fool's errand. <laughs> but um, as somebody who doesn't know all those rules by heart, I'm still I have a lot of respect for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not sure. it's not like it's not like I wish we all lived in a world where where everybody had total disregard for why great records sound great. Exactly. You know, I'm I'm all for experimentation, but not for experimentation's sake necessarily. Sure. You know, it's cool. just to try to find the thing that you're hearing in your head. Whatever fits best, yeah. you know, feels good. Yeah, whatever feels appropriate or wildly inappropriate to suit your tastes. It's like the number one thing. I don't know if it was Jim Keltner that said that, but it's like it's all about feel. If it feels right, you know, you know right away listening to it. Like, it's true. I mean, what he's saying is totally true, but that is such a... It, uh, I mean, I can picture a classroom of, of, of people who want to understand why the records they love sound the way that they do. Mm -hmm. To hear somebody say that is sort of like... I, I don't disagree with it, but I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Feel is something that really... It's a musical concept, yeah. you know? Like, that's a thing that... that um, has to do with with rhythm and melody and and inflection right. and and I think from the engineering side it probably has a lot to do with the hours spent in a room where when you do hear a magical sounding kick drum whether it's yours or on somebody else's record and you hear what it does to that record yeah regardless of the quality of the song you know I mean that engineering is this one facet of of music and some of the some of the best records are not the best songs and some of the sure. best songs are certainly not the best recordings and stuff like that but imagine the power when you when you have a great song working for you and you have a great recording of it yeah you know and 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 then <laughs> there's the other you have the you have a great label who's behind it who loves it you know you have people in the the recording industry or the music industry, sorry, who who understand the the importance of getting a great recording, right? You know, because there's certainly a, a school that thinks like, well, wh you know, why do we need to spend money? You you, you know, you can, I've I've heard I've heard somebody do a record on their computer at home. Yeah. Why doesn't everybody do it like that? He did it really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, I, I've heard of people mending broken arms, you know, in the middle of the woods without yeah. a doctor around. Why doesn't everybody do that? Yeah, well. There are professionals in this field, and, and they are good at what they do, and they should be, um, they should definitely be rewarded for it, and, and, and that art form should be understood and, and kept respected. Yeah, sacred, because yeah. these rooms aren't going to be around forever. I know. It's a shame. I love, absolutely love the studio. Yeah. All right. I don't want to go. I don't want to go on too long. So, uh, you have a Facebook that you kind of share a lot of the work that you do on. Uh, yes. I'm actually terrible at Facebook and social media. Me too. In terms of like um, staying on top of it. Mm-hmm. But um, there is a Facebook page that is dedicated to work that I'm doing, whether it's solo records or, or, or shows or um, uh, production and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I could definitely do a better job at, at keeping it more interesting. It's probably, it's pretty boring, but it's a I'm good sure place it's, to... I'm sure it's super cool. Yeah, it's a good place to um, to head to for, for upcoming... So stuff. they could just Facebook search Blake Mills and it's probably a page or something. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think it's probably just Blake Mills or Blake Mills Music or... It's not hard to find. Cool. If they if, if they're watching this, they're... You're probably a I'll, you know away. what? I'll yeah, I'll find it and I'll put it in the description and then they can just click it. Great. Great. Awesome. Well, uh thank you so much for chatting with me. I uh you know, it's great working with you and it's amazing getting to like just kind of absorb everything from what you're working on and just be a part of it. It's amazing. Oh, so, I fantastic. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Andy. Well, thank you so appreciate much. Appreciate it.